Just today, the Department of Energy announced new incentives for companies to bring solar power manufacturing back to our shores. We're in a real race. China's ahead of us. This is another step in helping us meet the goal of 100 percent clean, renewable energy electricity by 2035. By 2035, all electricity in America is going to be generated by clean energy. It's 2035. The sun rises and you wake up refreshed after eight hours of uninterrupted sleep. You slept like a baby, knowing that the morning light would soon be powering up a world driven by clean, zero-emissions solar power. Today, the US generates just 4% of its electricity from solar, but the renewable resource is on the rise since 2016. The number of solar installations in the nation has increased fivefold. The U.S. hopes to continue this momentum, reaching the point that solar provides 30 to 50 percent of America's electricity in 10 years. As a milestone on the path to a completely decarbonized energy sector by 2050. To find out how we could get there, let's take a quick look at the history of solar in the U.S. and the trends that could lead us into our sun-powered future. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and activating notifications to stay updated on our latest content. Remember, sharing is caring. Looking at where the US has been since discovery of solar power. In 1883, American inventor Charles Fritz creates the first working solar cell. It's made from the element selenium and converts 1% of the sunlight that hits it into electricity. 1940 marked American engineer Russell Shoemaker Ohl, who patents the world's first silicon solar cell. It also converts just 1% of the sunlight that hits it into electricity too little for practical use. The race is on to increase efficiency. In the late 1950s, Bell Labs researchers create a 6% efficient silicon solar cell. It generates electricity at a cost of about $300 per watt, adjusted for inflation, which is cheap enough for use in small electrical equipment like radios. In 1973, the photochemist Elliot Berman develops a solar cell out of cheaper materials, lowering the cost of electricity generation to $20 per watt. Panels consisting of five cells are used to generate electricity on oil platforms and remote telecommunication stations. Going down in 1978 was the conflict in the Middle East throughout the 1970s causes oil shortages in the US. The nation responds by creating the Department of Energy and passing the National Energy Act of 1978, which promotes increased use of renewable energy, including solar. 1982 marked the development of the, the first utility-scale solar farm begins supplying electricity to the grid in Hesperia, California. It has a capacity of 1 megawatt enough to power 300 to 400 homes. In 1994, scientists at the National Renewable Energy Lab developed the first solar cell to exceed 30% efficiency. In the year 2012, the LA Ola Solar Farm in Hawaii becomes the first utility-grade installation to include a battery storage system. It helps mitigate the variability of the farm's output. As of 2016, the US is now home to 1 million solar installations, including 1,500 utility-level installations that generate electricity at a cost of about $2.16 per watt. Here we are in 2024, where the Solar Energy Industries Association 
announces that the US now has more than 5 million installations nationwide, a five-fold increase in just eight years. So where is the US going to from here? Collectively, the US's 5 million solar installations can generate more than 179 gigawatts of electricity. Based on current trends, the SEO claims that the US's total solar capacity will soar to 673 gigawatts by 2034, providing enough electricity to power 100 million homes. The US will likely need to do better than that to meet the Biden administration's goal of 100% clean electricity by 2035, though. To decarbonize the grid by then, the Department of Energy expects we'll need as much as one terawatt or 1,000 gigawatts of solar capacity. Enough for solar to meet 30 to 50% of the US's electricity demand by itself. So how do we get there? While it'd be nice to think the recent surge in solar installations is driven entirely by Americans' desire to stop climate change, the reality is that it probably has more to do with economics than environmentalism. Solar is simply the cheapest energy option now. When you look at the cost trajectory, it's incredible. Jan Rosenau, Director of European Programs at the Regulatory Assistance Project, an NGO focused on the clean energy transition, told Freethink. Improvements in solar tech have been a primary driver of cost reductions as solar panels became more efficient at converting sunlight into electricity. The per watt cost of solar power fell. Earlier this year, the Department of Energy announced a 20 million US dollars funding opportunity for researchers with ideas for improving solar cell performance. And by continuing to invest in photovoltaic R and D, the US could facilitate tech breakthroughs that lower the cost of solar further. Solar is cleaner and cheaper than fossil fuels, but it can't compete with coal and natural gas in terms of reliability. We can burn those any time we need electricity. Dispatchable sources. But we can't force the sun to shine 24 on 7 in 365 days a year. We can store excess solar power during the day in batteries to use after the sun sets. But the lithium-ion batteries currently used at some solar farms can only hold a charge for a few days or at most weeks, meaning we can't use them to account for seasonal variations in sunlight. They're also expensive and degrade over time. Lithium-ion batteries aren't the only option for solar storage, though. And in 2024, the Department of Energy plans to open the Grid Storage Launch Pad, a $75 million R&D facility focused on exploring alternatives for storing excess solar and wind power, which could include flow batteries, thermal batteries, and even new kinds of batteries made with the help of AI. The Grid Storage Launchpad facility will bring together researchers and industry from around the country to modernize and add flexibility to the power grid, advance storage technologies and boost use of clean energy, said Secretary of Energy Jennifer M. Granholm. Efficient, reliable solar tech is no use to anyone if it never leaves the lab, and right now, the process of securing approval to deploy a solar power system can be time-consuming and complicated. Permitting reform at all levels of government can help address this for homeowners looking to install residential solar units, as can technologies like Solar APH Plus, an automated permitting platform developed by the Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Securing approval to build a solar farm and connect it to the existing electric grid can be even more challenging, but permitting reform can help there too.
The Council on Environmental Quality, for example, just updated the National Environmental Policy Act to make it easier for solar developers to complete environmental reviews for projects. These rules implement both time and page limits for environmental reviews and authorize the agencies to take a more collaborative approach to the permitting process. The rules should also prevent lengthy reviews for lower impact infrastructure projects, freeing up valuable agency resources, said Abigail Ross Hopper, President and CEO of the SEIA. One of the biggest hurdles between the US and its goal of 100% clean electricity by 2035 is the fact that the fossil fuel industry is actively working to prevent the deployment of solar power and other forms of renewable energy. We're building more solar than most people realize, but not fast enough to catch up with the physics of climate change, Bill McKibben, author and climate activist, told Freethink. It's possible, technologically and financially, but the ongoing opposition of the fossil fuel industry slows everything down. Some of this opposition is policy-focused in 2022. The fossil fuel industry spent $124.4 million on lobbying, often with the goal of preventing legislation that would help grow the solar industry. But oil companies have also been linked to misinformation campaigns designed to get private citizens to oppose proposed renewable energy projects in their communities. Despite this, the share of electricity that's generated by fossil fuels in the US, especially coal, is decreasing, while solar and other sources of clean energy are on the rise, suggesting that the fossil fuel industry's efforts may only be slowing the transition, not stopping it. The mission now? Accelerate the adoption of solar and other clean energy sources, such as wind, nuclear and geothermal, by innovating to overcome obstacles, supporting policies that advance their deployment, and promoting accurate information in our communities. That concludes today's discussion. Please remember to like, comment and share this content with fellow enthusiasts and relevant forums. Thank you and we eagerly anticipate your presence in our next episode.